and welcome. I've got another conversation on deck for you guys today. I'm going to introduce you to the fabulous Demetric Brown, who's based out of Atlanta, Georgia. He's a former chef and current food stylist. He has done work for all sorts of brands. I'm just going to list off a few here, but like Southern Living, Publix, GE, Golden Corral, Big Green Egg, uh, Coca-Cola, Meredith Corporation, sound familiar? Real Simple, Cooking Light, Power Aid, Atlanta Bread Company, and the list just keeps going on and on. I'm like literally just scrolling through a ton of names. So um, have you seen his work? I would bet you probably have. Um, you're gonna love meeting him. He's a fabulous individual. And just as a side note, apparently he has also cooked food for presidents in the past. So I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Anyways, check out his links below. He's got a fabulous Instagram, a fabulous website. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And now let's dig in with Dimitri. I'm going to let you um, introduce yourself, say hello, tell everybody who you are and where you're located and what you do. Sure, sure. Well, hello everyone. My name is Dimitri Brown. I am a food stylist uh, slash former chef, professional chef. Uh, I got in this industry because I've been a chef for uh, roughly about 30 years. And I transitioned over to the food styling because I pretty much done everything I wanted to do in life, uh, in, in, in the food in the food world, uh, in yeah. the industry. And I kind of lost the love for the industry, but never lost the love for food. And with them doing that, it helped me to when I transitioned over. So now I can still play with food every day. It's just I don't have to deal with the headaches and nuances that go with running the restaurant. And if anybody yeah. knows what it goes in the restaurant, they understand exactly what I'm talking about. No kidding. But, so did you own your own restaurant? Sorry to interrupt, but... Uh, no, no, you know, no, actually, no, never owned my own restaurant. Actually, I, it was a dream of mine when I was knee deep in the industry. But as I moved, progressed on, I realized this is not the headache I want the rest of my life. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there are too many pitfalls for it. And the competition is so stark that I knew if I need, wanted to have somewhat of a comfortable life, I needed to do something with, uh, you know, more and more intricate yeah. that's going to, you know, bring me, uh, you know, a, a better salary and less headaches, I guess. Yeah, well, I think part of probably what makes the food styling so interesting is you get in there and you're like full bore, 100% in it, and then it's done. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. then you do it again, but it's not every <laughs> single day, all the time, right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I, I, I really never played with or had the uh, ability to work with food and then have my own schedule or be able to control my own schedule. And yeah. that... In my in, in this day and age in my life, I, it means a lot to me. My time, my personal time means a lot because I, I missed a lot of it, you know, in the industry itself. So I guess I'm trying yeah. to catch up at this point. I saw I saw on your Instagram your fishing expeditions, and obviously earlier today you were out on the lake too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. One of my second or third uh, favorite pastimes. Food is my first. Uh, yeah. Garden is my second, and then yes, fishing is my third. But I've been doing it for the longest. I saw your garden too. I'm super jealous. I can barely keep anything alive, so it's like. <laughs> I had a garden like yours, it'd just be weeds and like dead stuff and I'd be like, I can't look at it anymore. <laughs> well, we all have, we have to start somewhere. That's right. <laughs> well, so so you were a chef for how many years, did you say? Uh, well, I've been, a, I've been in the restaurant industry for 30 years. I've been a chef probably about six, 26 of those years. And that's in Atlanta? Uh, well, Atlanta, I did some in Galveston, Texas and uh -huh. uh, Texas as well. Uh, yeah, those have been my main spots. I, I was a corporate chef, so I did travel around uh, for another company to other sites as a corporate chef. So I basically had to do the ins and outs of opening, closing restaurants, oh, wow. uh, the troubleshooting, uh, if there were issues, menu imp implications, uh, you know, the whole nine yards, all the stuff, the fun stuff that corporate chefs do, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Well, so um, when did you first sort of notice that food styling was a thing? And like, when did it first catch your eye? I actually heard about it when I was probably about, probably about 26 years old. At the time, just like anything else, yeah, you can't make a living off that. That's not real. I mean, if it is, it's just a specialty thing that you, you, know, you do on the side. And so I kind of passed it off, but I always play with food. As much as I spent in a restaurant, my past times were, okay, let's see what we can do with this trend today and make it look the best. And I was just practicing, didn't know that I was practicing for this career. And then I guess within the last seven years, I found that it was something real. It was tangible. And once I got my first paycheck, I was a believer. Well, so what was your first job, your first paid gig? My first, okay, my, I, I started doing some assistant work uh, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama for uh, a friend of mine named Sean Chavis. She was starting up uh, this cookbook type uh, setup. And I was assisting uh, a, a food stylist at the time. 
And when I got my really first gig was for Sprite here in Atlanta. No kidding. And it was a massive production. And of course, I'm deer in the headlocks the whole time. And if we got some time later on, I'd love to tell you the story because everybody's got that one story uh, about that one shoot. And th this was my first one and that's where the story started, yeah. <laughs> but so that story is so long, we could never cover it in this one conversation. Actually, it's not the whole story. It's just there's, a, there's some intricate parts that really <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I first first paid gig is for uh, uh, Sprite, which is a beverage, and that's like a whole another ball of wax, I'm sure. Well, it and is. For a commercial, so for video then too? Uh, actually, it was for commercial. It was for their uh, summer and winter, uh, summer and uh, holiday spread uh, for the winter, I believe it was 2016. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were introducing the Cranberry Sprite into the family. This was actually more food for me in this yeah. shoot that I had to do a backyard uh, grill oh, setup okay. and I had to do a Thanksgiving spread and then also yeah no big deal yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is all in like uh, two days time and the, the bad part is they were take, occupying the kitchen most of those days so <laughs> no problem turkey schmurky you could just yeah, do that no anywhere problem. it's no problem <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. good times though oh my gosh that's a huge first gig that's amazing um that would terrify me i'm sure as like you know <laughs> no big deal sprite yeah i got this like, <laughs> did you just go into it feeling like okay I, I can i can deal with this or you know on the outside yeah i went in there like no problem on the inside i was shaking in my boots trust me i was <laughs> everything that could possibly go wrong i was preparing preparing for it and of course something does go wrong anyway but I, yeah I, you know lucky for me i had done a lot of presentation cooking and when you're in a restaurant oh, sure. you're always in front of customers you're always on stage and that's pretty much how i ran my restaurants and my kitchen is look every day you walk into this place you're on stage you got to come in the best uniform you got to look pristine your hygiene everything's got to be about yourself uh, yeah. about you because somebody's watching and you want to make sure that you're always representing the best putting the best foot forward and so yeah. with catering, we're doing presentation dinners and stuff of that nature. It had already prepared me for, you're always going to have some butterflies. And the day you don't is a day you need to hang it up. That's probably yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good point. Well, so um, was food always sort of a big part of your life, like in childhood and everything too? And if so, did someone inspire you into the food world? Yeah, someone did when I was uh, about nine years old. Real quick story, my father's then girlfriend. She invited us to the Peachtree Plaza Hotel downtown Atlanta, and unbeknownst to he and I, she had hired a belly dancer and a chef to cook a, the four course meal in front of us. Wow. Uh, so we, so we, we got there, we, we're there, we're enjoying ourselves, and then the belly dancer comes out, and I probably haven't been right ever since. But uh, after that, <laughs> the uh, chef came out and he did an ice carving with my father's name in it. Okay. And I'm, instantly I'm hooked. I'm like, I want to do that. And then they rolled the ice carving out and then they rolled two six, uh, six foot uh, banquet tables in and he started cooking our food table side. Wow. And instantly right there, what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and that was to feed the masses. Yeah. And if I could say one thing is I, I was probably one of those lucky people in life that found their divine purpose and I've been stuck on stupid ever since. I think I've had like <laughs> maybe three jobs outside of the food. food. Yeah. <laughs> food <bar. laughs> That's kind of awesome because like I, as a kid I think I bounced around a ton. I was going to be like an artist or a teacher or I wanted to be was it a paleontologist. I wanted to be like uh, Indiana Jones and like oh, yeah, dig yeah. up you know artifacts and stuff because that's <laughs> realistic. <laughs> you know? Have you seen what so, they really look, do though? <laughs> yeah oh no 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 because like once I got to university I was like no this sounds terrible. This sounds terrible and I, I actually I, this is such a segue, but I graduated and I ended up um, having to earn a living because I had to pay back student loans. And I worked for I Omega, which no one even knows of anymore, probably. Uh, yeah. But I worked as tech support to pay my bills. <laughs> Woo! And there was a guy who was like one row over who had that degree. And he was like, I'm working here doing tech support because that sucked that bad. I was like, <laughs> so glad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's the bullet, I guess. <laughs> you know, small <laughs> blessings. Better, small blessings, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. So um, did you attend culinary school when you first got into it? Actually, no. I didn't attend culinary school till I was finished with my career in the restaurant industry. And the reason being is because I had raised family. I had 
lived a life, bought houses in the restaurant industry, you know, but it was all, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't call it self-taught. I, be, I would call it an adaptation and learning uh, under the, under the gun or, you know, school of hard knocks, is what we call yeah. it. But uh, my father, all my life has been on my case. Hey, all my kids got a degree except for you. I'm like, dad, but I'm the only one making a career. You know, the other one, my son, he has a, uh, he has a degree in this, but he's working at American Eagle, you know? And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to shut him up. I'm, I'm going to end off my career by getting a degree. Yeah. And that's how I fell into the food industry, food, food, uh, the food styling industry. Yeah. I fell in because one of my professors, she was actually an uh, editor for Cooking Light and Time Inc. in Birmingham. And uh, just what happened, I got, I got lucky. I got lucky yeah. with that. Well, I was searching. I won't say lucky. I, all I need was an opportunity. I was going to make it happen either way. Yeah, I didn't go to culinary school until I was like 46, 40, 44. Yeah, 44, 45. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, yeah. y'all. So there you go, Dad. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Now he, want, now he wants a, a master's. I'm like, Oh, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen, man. <laughs> a master's. A master's in what? You're already a master. Come uh, on. No, I wouldn't call it that, but uh, I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so um, what's probably like your most favorite thing to dig into food styling wise? I'll be honest with you. I, I treat food styling as far as favorites as I did as a chef. I love uh, so many facets, so many different parts of it that I didn't want to be a one trick pony at this or, mm -hmm. you know, be stuck in this area. I wanted to be very versed in a wide variety because I wanted to make sure that um, I had a larger audience I could you know, provide for. Yeah. Um, I will say bacon would be probably my least favorite only because I, in life, bacon is still my least favorite. I can do it, <laughs> but I choose not to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But all in all, I just really wanted to be as versed as possible because I wanted to have a variety of clients. I wanted to be able to do the soul food restaurants. I wanted to be able to do the high-end, high, high, -end, high you know, fine dining. I wanted to be able to do the Caribbean yeah. or the Tex-Mex or West Indian. What, you know, I wanted to be able to have that opportunity, not to mention... I got in this business to make all the money, not some of it, not partially, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> so the more you know, the more you can do, the more you can bring in. <laughs> the, you know, the less, I, less I have to say no to people, you know? That's true. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so... Um, I study hard. I study real hard on whatever... Oh, I'm there's working. no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like a, a master of none. You're, you're well-versed in a lot. I, if I had to narrow it down, I would probably say... Uh, uh, proteins, grilled meats. Uh, yeah. Uh, those are probably going to be my ult ultimate favorite. Again, just like life, I've always, I've got about 15 grills and smokers at the back. So um, <laughs> I've, I've had family interventions and everything. They're like, hey, Interventions. Dude, no, more, no more grills, man. <laughs> Whatever you do. I, I love grilling and everything, but I'm not, I, that's like my gardening. I'm, yeah. I'm good enough. Yeah, I'm yeah, better at grilling yeah. than I am at gardening, but uh, yeah. You won't, you won't yeah. starve. You won't starve at least. Yeah. I won't starve, but I'm not going to impress anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we will survive. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so um, what do you think it is about food styling, though, that um, besides like being able to make your own, um, your own schedule and sort of the, maybe the variety, but like what is it about a job that makes it successful for you? First of all, I'm not being paid that day for the shoot. I'm being paid to be prepared to perform on that day. And I look at my job as problem solving. I'm not just a food stylist. Uh, you know, people come to me with ideas of what they want the image to look, and I'm here to, yeah. uh, to make that happen. So that, you know, that's, and I, I love the challenge. I always love the challenge of something new, something different. Uh, the one thing I really hated about being in one restaurant uh, for a long period of time is I'm constantly cooking the same types of food over and over again. I wanted yeah. variety. I love the change of pace. I love the fact I get to play with certain foods that I don't know. I don't normally get an opportunity to play with otherwise. Sea urchins and you know, oh, yeah. fish and stuff of that nature. You know, yeah. I, you, you, the average person doesn't just go out and buy this stuff because you specifically need it for a specific thing, or it's traditional, or you know, you know, in your yeah. home. That's, those are pretty much set up. But for me. I always wanted to be able to play with as much food as I possibly could play with before I lay my lay, lay down for my dirt now. And I'm still <laughs> on that mission. I'm still on that mission. So I, I you know, that's the part of it. I love the challenge of, of creating for yeah. my clients and making something come to fruition for them. And also like I love the ability to be able to play with new and different foods. Yeah. Yeah. Variety is the spice of life. Challenge keeps things interesting. Keeps uh, the brain going. Tell me <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, I'm assuming you work on a team most of the time, or 
some of the time. Most of the time, yeah. Most most of the time, it's usually a a, a, a group. I, I work with a lot of big budget. Uh, yeah. I do some small, but mostly big budget. And there's everything from you know production assistants to you'll have the prop stylist, and then you have a prop stylist assistant. I'll have an, an assistant. I may have two, depending on how, what the caliber or the scope of it. Yeah, hey, there you go. <laughs> Photographers, and they have their assistants as well. And then we have you know a lot of uh, creative around as long along with producers. Yeah. Um, and brand names and so forth. So and so, you know, yeah, it's it can be it can be uh, a little challenging at times. But once you get the lingo and the layout of everything, it's it's pretty simple stuff. Yeah, when you're working in a team setup, how does how does that dynamic work? Let's say you've got two assistants. How do you sort of delegate your your work for the day? Well, um, usually I hate to put it this way, but uh it, it is what it is. Uh there's a grunt <laughs> worker and yeah. then there's uh <laughs> Or the, the, the uh, I guess they call it the expediter or the person that, you know, expedites from the grunt to what I need on set. If it's uh, one of those shoots where I'm pretty much going to be stuck on set all the time, I need somebody who can work and think like me. Yeah. And, and that would be my, I guess, my expediter, so a middleman or whatever you yeah. want to call it. And then I'll have the grunt person who's just keeping everything tidy, uh, making sure that products are where they need to be, making sure that uh, whatever the next shot's uh, production is, uh, is already portioned out, ready to go online. And so it, it's, it's all a matter of uh, good synergy and mm -hmm. great communication. And it really starts with me and before the shoot even starts. I need to delegate and be, make sure I have specific jobs with specific people so that I can make sure it gets done and then make sure that they match their strengths. Yeah, absolutely. So how often do you get to pick your team? Or do you sometimes get on set and it's already been picked for you and you have to kind of work with it? Usually uh, for uh, one of my clients, um, they, they already, they normally pick uh, their, their assistants for me. And usually they're in-house people that are there all the time, oh, which yeah. I, I, I communicate and we, we do a great job together either way. But most jobs I'm usually picking my assistants. And right now I'm grooming my daughter as one of oh, my- Oh, yeah. no kidding. How old's your daughter? She's 22. Well, she's an adult now. Not <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that would be awesome because she would know you so well. She does, and it, it helps. It helps quite a bit. I do have a few others that I also use as well, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm grooming her because she seems to really, really have found a, a knack for this. And yeah. right now, I'm just teaching her the science of food and how it reacts so that she can have a mental thought process on how things are made and she can think about what she needs ahead of time. So it, it's, I'm working it, working it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I never even sort of really thought about it as a, a family business, but if you can work it into something like that, all yeah. the better. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure you guys, you guys get along first, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as she's an adult and, you know, if she's got her own place at the end of the day, at least you're not bringing that home, too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What's your favorite piece of equipment on set and why? I'll tell you what everybody thinks my favorite piece of equipment is. It's, a, it's called a Searsall, which is uh, the torch that has a little uh, dis, dis, diffusion burner on the front of it. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I've cooked for presidents. I've made uh, dinners for celebrities and stars. But I've got more pictures of this damn thing in my hands, browning <laughs> something, heating something up, because everybody's just so enthralled with it. So let everybody else tell you it's going to be the Searsall. For me, it's probably yeah. the tweezers. It's probably the tweezers. Yeah, I spend so much time with them, and my tweezers are uh, a bit different from most people. I use the large ones, the large tweezers. I saw. Yeah. yeah, there's like a. I was I was cruising your Instagram earlier today, and they're like this long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reason being is because I spent all I'm spent all my young young childhood playing football and catching these footballs, and I've spent a career you know, with uh, hot plates and stuff, and that's so I've oh, lost. Yeah. I've lost dexterity in my fingertips, so I, I can't use those small dainty ones. I'll crush everything I try to get a hold of. So I need something with a little bit more resistance and surface space, you know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I actually, so I use um, insect calipers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are good because they have very light touch. You can't crush anything with them, but you, they're too short. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, where do you find your inspiration? Everywhere, everywhere. I, even when I'm in my garden, I see a tomato that looks, you know, abstractly weird, you know, I get inspirations of that. Uh, I get inspiration from other, other stylists and a lot of other stylists, matter of fact, I really love to look at other people's stuff and not more or less critique, but 
see what yeah. the the pluses are and see how I can incorporate that as well or where you know where am I falling short in certain areas that I need to advance myself um, yeah. I, I a lot in nature um, a lot in just the uh, process of possibly screwing up uh, especially at home yeah <laughs> <laughs> home, that oh, didn't I, work yeah remember not to do that you know <laughs> Every time I get to touch food, whether it be cooking or whether it be, you know, just uh, playing with the stuff in the garden or just bringing stuff out when I'm, I'm bored, I, I spend a lot of time playing with food. And even if I'm just slicing onions, I'm trying to find new forms and new ways or, okay, what if I need to have this relish and I needed some really pointy pieces and I would you know, try yeah. to fabricate it that way. And then, of course, I go to the cooking process, so I don't waste it. But I, I try to find it in pretty much all walks of life. Yeah, yeah. So you're constantly kind of keeping your skills sharp too. Like you're not just sort of you're not just fishing on your days off. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's uh that's a good habit I I brought with me from the restaurant industry and being a chef because as a chef you you, you have to be as uh, with the times and innovative and always ever changing, and that part. I brought with me to the food styling because I knew know that there's going to be a new new shift at another time. You know, back in the '70s, it was all about perfect cuts and everything oh, yeah. was dainty. To now, everything's rustic, and they want to see the imperfections. You know? Yeah, so, and I love I love um, just looking through your portfolio and everything that your your work looks really real. You know, yeah, it looks yeah. like somebody really put it together. And they're not worried about everything looking pristine. It just looks like I just want to dive in and eat it. And it's not just so. There's something very um, hard to put your finger on as to like why that's so pleasing. But there's something to just a little bit of a ah, <laughs> in the work. It's funny that you mentioned that because when I first started in the industry, uh, the food styling, uh, the, first assist, the first stylist I worked with said, at some point in time, you have to, you have to figure out what your style is. And yeah. I would just make it, but never knew. And it. it took a friend of me to tell me that, you know what your style is? You like to make food look salivating, like it, it's there for you to pick. It's, you know, in the yeah. moment, it, it, you know, it, it, may, it looks approachable. It looks like something I could do at home. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's not so perfect that you can't touch it because you'll mess it up. You just want to dig into it. And don't yeah. worry about yeah. it. You can yeah. see the flavor. You can imagine what it's going to taste like, and then you're just going to dive right in. So once I found out that, you know, that was my style, I just, you know, owned it, took, took hold of it. Yeah. Uh, I, will, I will say that it was very hard to pull back my chefing skills because as a, as a French trained chef, we talk about the, you know, the precision cuts, the, you know, batonets, the, you know, oh, the, yeah. you know, one eighth and one fourth. In, and that's ingrained into your head to, you can't think otherwise. <laughs> and then I get to the food style and I'm like, oh, I can mess up and they'll love it. Ah, oh, this would be a breeze, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I loved it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, not that it's at all interesting, but prior to my life here as a photographer and, and food stylist on the side, uh -huh. I um, I did painting. I, I went to school for art and I was going to be a painter. Yeah, I exhibited. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it helped. It helped. But um, my paintings were so like, I had to be so like tight and perfect and da 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 da. Yeah, and yeah. it was like just before I stopped exhibiting, I did like two paintings and they're the best paintings I ever did because all I did was take one big messy brush and I just like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, that was the answer the whole time. <laughs> and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> yeah. Save it for yeah. your latter years. Save it for the latter years. You know. Yeah, exactly. When I'm when I'm like, you know what? It might be nice pick up a paintbrush again but for now what I love is the photography is instant like I can I can grow fast I can see what I'm doing and make changes and if I want to move something two inches to the right I can totally do that after taking that shot but if I want to do that in a painting oh my gosh, yeah, about it's it. over <laughs> no yeah it's so frustrating so frustrating oh gosh well, so are you noticing any sort of shifts and trends since you started food styling um, to like, you know, what might be coming down the pike now? In all honesty, I, right now, I personally feel like it's kind of in that purgatory area where it, it's, it's kind of stuck where it is. I mean, uh, everybody's yeah. really uh, taking hold of the uh, rustic the imperfections. I think yeah. mostly uh, the things that are changing are just the different diets that are changing with it. You know, now we're oh, in the sure. keto diet keto whichever way you want to call it and yeah 
and then so that you know and then uh you're doing a lot more healthier stuff uh, a lot more grains and you know but yeah. as far as the the uh, food itself i guess by the time i really started in it they had moved away from a lot of artificial food and then focusing on using real food um just uh some things they change the depth perception of it so that it looks you know more you know in your face in other words i eat burgers you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, as far as trends, I personally haven't seen it. However, you know, when I do, I'm definitely gonna have to take hold of it and yeah, learn as well. Uh, I, I think Sometimes a lot it's subtle too, like yeah, the it, trends. You don't realize you're like in it until you step back and go, "Oh wait, this is like really different." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like gradual. So, <laughs> you're 100 percent right on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a frog. Is it a frog in a boiling water? Like if you turn up the tap a little bit, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, wait a minute!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, so um, I'm assuming things are kind of getting back on track now, because at least you're in Atlanta, so you guys weren't. I'm in Florida, so like obviously we apparently don't care either to a certain extent. I know on set people are being very careful, so I don't mean to be flip about that. Yeah. But in general, like um, being able to get back on track and get back on set, how how things sort of been transitioning for you there? It, I had to lose a lazy bone that I had okay, I became accustomed to. I mean, I tried to stay as busy as possible, but it was just way too much time to do nothing. And I just yeah. took full advantage of most of it. And so getting back into the studio, it was just about getting that mindset and that body to, you know, back to the same yeah. Uh, same standard that it was before. Don't get me wrong, the, the mind is there already because you're so happy that you're finally doing something that's constructive that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but the body's like, hey, man, isn't it time for that afternoon nap you used to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I've only, I think I've only taken like three naps, but I'm like, this could be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trying to keep busy, trying to keep things like a schedule. Yeah, yeah. Oh, works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, that's been the main thing. Um, I will say that right now, to find sp certain specific foods, that especially that are oh, yeah. not most commonly found, is very hard. Very yeah. Hard. I mean, yeah, we had to substitute pumpkins uh, for this, uh, this waffle that we were making with pumpkins for Halloween. We needed some theme yeah. in the background. I could find all the squashes, and matter of fact, I've, I found all the squashes and gourds in the world. For, <laughs> just not the ones you need. There's not, a, there's not a pumpkin, not a mini or nothing. So we had to go and yeah. buy some fake ones and uh, kind of blur them out in the background. Yeah. The specialty items are really tough to find right now because everybody, even the grocery stores, are still trying to get back into the norm of carrying what they need to. Right now, it's still in that desperation stage. So There's toilet and, paper again. <sighs> thank goodness. <laughs> It's totally not related, except that it's like, it became a specialty item. I was looking at replumbing plumbing my bathroom so I can put up a day in there or something, you know? You did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's done here. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was actually, this is so, so off topic, but like last week I put it on my list, like, this is the brand we want. <gasps> they have it! <laughs> Never seen people so excited over such a simple okay. product before, right? I know. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody were interested in getting into food styling, what would your advice be to them? My advice, first of all, is to spend a lot of time learning the science of food and how it reacts uh, to acids, to salts, heat, mm -hmm. cold. Uh, make sure you hone that part. Learn your, your, your basics of cooking, your sautés, your boils, your grills, uh, before you even start in this industry, please learn those parts because they're, they're, you're gonna to have to fall back on them so much because it's gonna be, especially knowing the science of food, it's gonna be the difference between you being successful and being a failure. Yeah. Uh, because on the set, as you know, those lights, they get pretty hot and Lord forbid you got an ice cream shoot, you know, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, everybody brings up the ice cream shoots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now there are ways around it, but uh, you know, I, you just just learn the science of food. That would be my first thing. Second would would be to uh, find your local uh, photographers and local food stylists, stylists around town, and bug them, bug them, bug them. Hey, just let me come on the set. I just let me sit in the corner. I just want to see what you're doing. 
you know, at, you know, just, you know, it's a really t tight knit community, and yeah. it's really, it's really, it's tough to get into this industry. I, I was very lucky. Uh, I got one opportunity, and again, that was all I needed because I, I, I was determined I was going to do this. Yeah. I had nothing else. I had no what else I could do at the time, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, get in contact with your local uh, food stylists and uh, photographers around town and just ask them to come sit on set, you know, campaign your butt off. Uh, do anytime you get an opportunity to play with food. Yeah, do it. Uh, even if it's mashed potatoes, learn how to get that perfect swirl in there. And get yeah. that butter in there. Uh, if you if you're messing with sour cream, same thing, you know, get that perfect dollop. Yeah, uh, you know, if you're playing with sauces or what have you, you want to get this nice clear sauce, you know, play with trying to strain it until you get the perfect color or perfect clarity that you need and being yeah. able to work with that as well. Just a little simplest of things that you don't think about, I promise you, you'll face them at some point in time on the shoot, whether it be green beans, asparagus, ice cream, or cake. Yeah. Uh, those would be my first things. Um, again, bug your local food stylist and your local photographer because yeah. a lot of times they're going to ignore you. I mean, I had this one... That's uh, so true. I was his one stylist. She said, look, just come in and make me some coffee. Stop calling me. Just come in and make some coffee and sit down. <laughs> and, you know, and it, it was just to a point where she thought it was funny. And it, it shows the fact that you truly want to be in this industry. And when you get an opportunity, don't fail yourself. Prepare. Prepare. Yeah. Again, they pay you to be prepared, not to, not to perform. You know, you do That's the true. performance for free. Brett Favre told me that one, taught me that one. Yeah. No yeah, 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 yeah. Brett Favre said, you know, they don't pay you for what you do on Sunday. They pay you for Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday. You know, yeah. You've been prepared. What you do for Sunday is free. So I take that with me. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. This has been awesome. And if it, if it comes up, is it okay for me to reach out to you again? And Absolutely. Anytime. Yeah. I, it, was, it was an honor and pleasure. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I would love to do it again anytime. Yeah. It was and so great to meet you. As soon as we can, I'd love to work with you as well. That would be fantastic. Cool, cool. Look forward to it, all right? All right. Take care. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day, and may you catch lots of fish. In your mouth, the guy's here. Take care. <laughs>